Welcome back to part two of Can This Be Fixed? This is the worst furniture I've ever picked up. So let's recap. So I found this on Marketplace. I thought it was in good shape. It was not. It was the worst buy I've ever had. I almost put it on the curb, but then I thought maybe we could save this from the landfill. So much furniture gets wasted every year. So a ton of Bondo, a ton of sanding, more Bondo, more sanding. See the inside there? We had to prime that whole thing. We had to then sand the prime and continue to work on this piece. We caulked it, we primed it again. It was a mess. One of my clients on Instagram picked the color paint because she wanted this piece so bad, so it's Sandbar by Dixie Belle. We covered it in a polyacrylic and then got to work with the top. And this is where I'm going to slow it down for you because in the last video, part one, I did this really fast. So I want to show you guys when you're first working with the gel stain, you're going to get the piece wet. Gel stains are typically water-based and so they dry really quickly and so if the surface is wet then you can have a better understanding at moving it around. It's just more fluid and doesn't dry. I tested the color of mixing two of these stains together, decided I wanted a little bit more of a wood tone in it because it was pulling pink, and so I mixed a third one into this batch as well. It's in the description. From here, I mixed my stain up completely. I wetted the entire top of the surface. I poured it on and then I got to work with my zebra brush, um, pulling it around and my last swipes that I'm gonna take are I'm gonna go with the grain. So right now I don't have to go with the grain, but the last pulls of the brush that I wanna do are to go with the grain, which is left to right or right to left. Typically you want to do the edges at the end because they will saturate more of the stain than the top. And so once you finish that up, you can let it sit for just a few minutes and then you're gonna go over with your shop cloth or rag and you're gonna start wiping in the stain. You wanna wipe it in, not off, um, with a shop cloth. And the reason you wanna do this is because gel stains are act more like a paint. So you wanna rub them in so they get the full richness of the color. And you don't wanna to rub too much off, but you wanna make sure that it's even across. So I'm going back and forth with shop cloth, folding them in half, getting a clean piece on there, and folding them inside and out, and doing it all over again until I get the consistency and color that I wanted. Now once your gel stain is dry and it's the color you want, you're gonna put that same polycrylic that you used to seal the paint, and you're gonna put two to three coats of that. Now we get to the fun part of the gilding wax. My client wanted just a little bit of sheen as she had seen on one of my previous pieces. And so I pulled out my gilding wax in gold from Dixie Bell and started applying that just around the edges. I'm applying with my finger because it's the easiest for me. I'm just going right on the top of the surfaces and anything that I don't want or it gets in a place that I don't want it, you can rub it back with a shop cloth with a tiny bit of mineral spirits on it and it will remove it right off. They have this gilding wax in a variety of different colors, so go check out their samples. Um, they are so great and easy to work with, and they last a long time. So I've had this wax for about a year now. This is my favorite part of the piece to do, details like this, because it just makes those edges and those details pop. Now you're gonna watch on here, I'm gonna get too much on that top part in just a second. And when I realized it was too much, I didn't like it, you can't get it off with your finger. So I go back, I get the rest of it off my finger, and I go back with a shop cloth and mineral spirits and watch it just come right off the place that I didn't want it. Perfect and super easy to work with. Now for the handles for this piece, I pulled ones from my shop that I had, but we ended up going with the drop pulls um, ultimately. But I sprayed these handles the same color, Rust-Oleum Metallic Gold. It's one of my favorites. It's a really soft sheen gold. And I placed these handles back on. My little helper helps me, and he loves screwing these in. His name is Lincoln, and he is five years old, and he is learning all things tools and safety. For old vintage pieces like this, sometimes the mechanics of it, it's missing um, the magnetic stuff inside. And so for this piece, I went to Home Depot. This costs like $1.78. And it's a little magnetic piece that can attach to the door. And this is one of my mistakes that I made on this dresser. I put it right at the edge because I'm super smart like that and just wasn't really thinking. But it cannot go right on the edge. The door has to actually close all the way. And I still didn't get it until watch me complete this whole thing and screw it all on and then realize how dumb it was. Yep, it was right about this point. <laughs> so to undo mistakes like that, you unscrew it, you move it back to where the door can close, and then you have a working magnetic piece that can hold the door closed. 
Now watch the difference of what this looks like versus what it did look like. That was already a bondoed base right there because of how much veneer was missing and how much repair needed to be done. And we made all of those imperfections go away. We saved this piece from the dump that I honestly almost put it in twice. And it has a new home and it's beautiful in its new space. Now to stage pieces like this, I get complimentary colors from inside my house and usually a lot of this stuff I use to decorate my own home, but I get it to stage my furniture. I'm working with a faux flooring that you can get at Lowe's for like $19 to $25. I have a 10 by 10 faux vinyl brick backdrop and I have a really good lighting kit and I've linked all these things in the description below. But basically you wanna make your piece pop and you wanna take photos of your piece straight on and then get close ups of the piece with great lighting and then you post the piece for sale if you haven't already sold it. Thank you guys so much for joining on this part two of Can This Be Fixed? Please subscribe and share this video. Comment below. Thanks again.